Welcome to the Strap and Link podcast, where we cover brands from their inception to their latest release. It's the Montrose Tudor. Like I said, better movement, spring drive so potentially, Rolex Oyster Perpetual. Anyway. There's super ocean, super ocean here. Now you see this kind of renaissance of Tudor. Finally, in 2016, they achieved the spring drive with an eight day power. The podcast for watch lovers, by watch lovers. New episodes every first and third Monday of the month. What's up, big dog? Welcome back. Well, it finally happened. I know we hinted at it the last couple episodes, but you're now a father. <laughs> I am now a father. Yes. All right. Today's episode. This, he's sleepless and delirious, so this should be a good one. <laughs> <laughs> today's episode, all about birthrights. Birthright watches. <laughs> Welcome back yes. to Strap and Link, everybody. What's going on? Brett and David. Um, I do have a kid and a new watch. Ooh, <laughs> well, two, two for one special. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So uh, t- you want to d- dive right into your watch? Uh, I think most people guessed it by our uh, hinting on uh, on our Instagram stories. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Did we ever end up even saying it, what it was? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I posted some stuff um, Yeah, about it. I, I got a Tissot PRX um, after just completely shitting all over the PRX in our Tissot episode. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, Can't it, wait it for worked the Tiso updated episode. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, no, it worked out great. I, I had my Tiso gentleman listed, and a guy reached out and asked me if I wanted to trade and uh, said he had a PRX. And I was like, I mean, sure, why not? You know, I wasn't really having any success selling the Tiso anyway, and mm-hmm. um, it wasn't wearing it for sure. So to me, it certainly felt like I let go of a watch that I never really wore, and I got a watch that I've worn like 17 of the 19 days that I've owned it so far. So Yeah, if you sold that watch next week, I would think you get your money's worth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm not I'm not upset about letting go of the gentleman. Do the, the the PSR the PRX is so cool. It's so fun. Mm-hmm. It's uh um, yeah, I even put it on uh last time we saw each other and I mean it was it honestly blew me away just, you know, I mean, it it there are the small things that we did pick apart that are still there, you know, the mm-hmm. loom and different the things. Loom, yeah. But I mean, the way it felt, I mean, it felt great for a watch. I understand why a lot of people get that watch. Put it that yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We can talk a little bit more about that later today or, um, yeah, like you said, in a TISA follow-up episode. So, um, but I know this is one of your uh, yeah. sort of small but favorite brands it's not like yeah. your go-to or anything but yeah tell us uh, what we're doing today a little yeah bit. so today we're uh, going to discuss rotto which i'm sure you saw in the uh, title this is a brand that to me i've i've seen around a lot of jewelry stores i think a lot of jared's actually sell them um you know but uh there there's a brand that's slowly growing in the u.s market i feel like they're way more popular overseas um we'll kind of talk about maybe why that is um in the history portion but uh it's it's a watch brand that i think is growing and i think if you keep an eye out for it you'll notice them more and more in in stores maybe you don't see too many of them out in the wild like we like to say but a very underrated brand i mean this is a brand that's known for their innovation and uh, different types of materials and watch just design that we use that they use. You know, we, we talk a lot about, you know, watch brands get always thrown into corners, trying to copy this, try to copy that, mm-hmm. trying to copy this, this brand, I, I looking through their collection. I don't think there's really anything that they've copied no. on any of no. their watches. They are very, very in their own lane. And I really respect that for them. And maybe that's why, you know, the U S market hasn't really taken off because I feel like the U S market is very, you know, Hey, we like Submariners and we like APs or, you know, Royal O's. Right. And, uh, you know, so everybody tries to follow one of those two lanes and a little variation here and there, but Rado, you know, they, they're in their own space. And I think maybe Europe, the middle East, I know they're very big over in, you know, the UAE places like that. And then also Asia, I feel like they really stand their own over there because maybe those markets don't care as much about just the Submariner and the Rolex. And that's all we like. So uh, maybe that's why, Um, but we'll talk about that more. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up. The, you know, one of the watches I'm going to talk about is like the epitome of that whole idea that they don't, Mm -hmm. they, they beat to the tune of their own drum. So yeah, I'm glad that you brought that up because it's something we'll, we'll, you know, come back to a few times at least. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, something else that we are going to do, not really anything new on the episode. We always, you know, highlight a few watches, um, two from David, two from myself, 
and we were kind of talking over the last week or so, and we just decided to give that that whole sort of watch spotlight a little bit more of a structure. So yeah. the only thing that we're going to do that we're going to change here is we're going to sort of segment out these four watches into two categories. The first being watches that we buy with our own money. So yep. I go into a you know a store that sells Rado and I'm Got looking to buy a Rado. What what would be the Rado you'd buy? Exactly. Yeah. 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 What what am I going to spend my hard earned money on? And the second category just being everything and anything else. Uh, yeah. So that could be based on cost. It could be the design of it. Um, it could be just iconic status, right? Um, yeah, just something anything you that, just want to talk about. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So anything we think you should know about, or anything that really jumps out to grab our attention. Um, so yeah, instead of maybe going after, you know, four of the more popular or four of the more expensive or attainable, we're just going to sort of split those up into, into those. And, um, yeah, yeah. And I think that'll be, I think that'll be fun because now we'll have a little bit more, I think of a conversation when we finish up the first two that are going to be what we would buy if it was our money on the line. And then I think we'll be able to have a little bit of a different conversation after those compared to the other two that are, you know, again, maybe those oddballs or maybe those super high end expensive, crazy ones. Right. Yeah, definitely. And and that'll give us time for you guys to get more involved on our social media. And we'll probably post side by sides of the two watches uh, oh, that yeah. we picked and, uh, you know, let you guys vote and see which one y'all would rather have, you know. Thank you for bringing that up because we did that after Bell and Ross episode. Mm-hmm. And we, perfectly we, have, <laughs> we officially tied. So yeah. that's another thing. That's kind of the, the, the 1A or I'm sorry, the 1B to this 1A of segmenting our four watches is, um, yeah, so we're going to take the two that we would buy with our own money and yep. we're going to put those up on social as a poll. So go in there, take a look at what we're each sort of lobbing up to everybody and explaining. Uh, like David said, we split um, perfectly down the middle 50-50 on our Bell and Ross episode. You had the BRX5 Ice Blue, if I recall, mm-hmm. and then I had the... Ooh, what did, I think I just had the BR zero three or no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I had the, I had the BR 94 steel heritage, the circular case design yeah. with sort of the faux More patina blacked world. out. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, we split uh 50% even. So we're officially 0, 0 and one against one another and we're going to keep that tally going. I don't know. Maybe the first one to get, I don't know. Let's say, Ooh, Hey, this is fun. Okay. The first one to get X number of dubs has to buy the other one a watch. Could be a it look could be a three hundred dollar Seiko, yeah. You know that'd be fun, yeah. Or or like or like a hundred dollar G Shock, you know, like a little yeah. beater when you're doing Something you know cool. lawn work, yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. We'll come back to everybody yeah. on that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll negotiate. We'll, we'll figure we'll figure out the number we need to get to. His first one to one wins. Yeah, <laughs> I win. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Start picking the most plain Jane where everybody will like it. There'll be no haters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to start manipulating this. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so kind of talking more about today, um, I was lucky enough to be able to go when I was in the Bahamas and see a Rado AD um, down there in the Atlantis um, shopping, you know, whatever they have there. And um, so I got to see a bunch of these in person, try some on. And that was really what fired me up. This was back in June, what fired me up about talking about these guys. And I was telling Brett, you know, we need to bring these guys up this year. We're going to do it this year. We kept kind of pushing it back, had a a few interviews and you know life happens but uh, excited to get to this so today we're going to talk about four different watches as always we're going to talk about the true square um and to be more specific the true square open heart will be what i will talk about and then the captain cook which i think most everybody knows of that watch that's probably their most popular and uh the integral and that watch to me i've seen many many times on tv um like i said Dion sanders actually wears this watch on um, on the sideline a lot of the times you'll be able to see it on him if you look at pictures and uh, then lastly we will talk about the dia star which to me is a very cool kind of out there watch you know we'll, we'll talk about the history of that and this again is part of the reason that watch is part of the reason rado took off how they did so uh, four very good watches it. yeah four very good watches i think this episode so wow. you should uh should be a good episode. Yeah. Yep. I am uh yeah, super excited to talk about the Die Star. Um <clears throat> possibly more so than I am the Captain Cook. Mm-hmm. So really quick, uh let's just go ahead and we're going to go to some quick news and notes. So I don't know if anyone else heard this recently, but I saw this online 
uh, what day, day is today? So we're at the end of November here. I read that Rolex might stop making the Pepsi GMT Master 2 because the failure rate to produce the bezel is so high. Really? And okay. the, you know, if anyone's listening to that and you're like, that doesn't really make any sense or can you elaborate? There wasn't a whole, there, there wasn't a lot of specifics around this, but from what I know of the process from having the folks over at Monza joined the show and talking a little bit about that process of, you know, making and coloring bezels, I, it, it, just, it has to be the color. I mean, there's something going on where they can't produce that ceramic bezel in the, the right shade or hue of red and blue that they want to. And I don't know, apparently it says the failure rate is high enough that Rolex are considering just going away from it entirely. So um, that's crazy because the Pepsi, I think is, I don't know. I mean, the Pepsi to me, I, I feel like is the, is the most popular GMT and yeah, they've had blue is. and red, you know, in the past, obviously, you know, when, when the Coke was a thing, there, there was no ceramic bezel back then. But I mean, today the Batman Batgirl, that's a black and blue, you know, I don't know how similar those blues are, but nonetheless, it's really interesting to hear that that could happen and that the failure rate is high enough to even be newsworthy. So, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Have to definitely keep an eye on that as we go into the new year. Yeah. Um, lastly, before we get started, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at strap and link and TikTok at strap and link. Those are our two most uh, active social media uh, sites, I guess you could say. Yeah. Uh, we post on Instagram daily, different stories, some of our favorite watches. We have a lot of fan interactions there. Um, a lot of guys will DM us and we'll just talk back and forth about uh, different things and their opinions, especially when we start hinting at what our next episode will be. That seems to be when we get the most interaction with you guys. And so uh, definitely keep that coming on uh, Instagram and TikTok. We have a bunch of cool reels going up out there pretty much a few times a week. So uh, definitely give us a follow on both of those. And uh, yeah, yeah, let's get into it. Yeah. Um, and actually real quick before we jump into mailbag. So we're going to go mailbag and then history. And then we're going to hit you with our watches that we would personally purchase. Before hmm. we jump into mailbag though, um, just want to give everyone a really quick update on kind of what's ahead on the Strap Link podcast. So um, obviously this is our December number one episode, our second December episode, and then going into January. We're going to be doing some really cool things. So if you're wondering, you know, hey, you guys have talked about some maybe less popular, maybe less polarizing brands lately to sort of cap off the the year here. So our next one of our next episodes, I don't know if it's going to be the next, but if it's not, it will most certainly come before the end of January. We're going to go and revisit Grand Seiko. So we're yeah. actually crazy, crazily enough, we're getting close to the one year anniversary of our first episode, which was February of last year when we talked about Grand Seiko. And that was right before Watches and Wonders. So of course they have released a slew of new watches. <laughs> so that'll be coming up, like I said, hopefully sometime this month, but potentially in January. And then also in January, we are carving out room for one of the three big boys in the room. We've already talked about one. We did a two-part episode on Rolex. Next up, we've got Autumn RBK, and then we'll have Patek Philippe. So we're going to jump into We will Audemars. not do those back-to-back, -back, but we will. Correct. Yeah. Yep. So they're not going to be back-to-back. -back. Audemars will be in January. So getting really excited about that. I think we're going to do a pretty in-depth profile on Gerald Genta and some of the watches that he's created, obviously the Royal Oak being one of those. So, um, so yeah, just wanted to let you guys know that, Hey, if you're kind of wondering like, Hey, these brands are, you know, maybe I'm not too familiar with them, you know, give me your feedback on some stuff that everyone knows. Just want to let everyone know again, Grand Seiko part two doing a new update of all their new watches, the Katana, the crazy hand etched, um, you know, white birch made of platinum from last. I mean, just all the crazy stuff that they've done and then dropping the hammer with some AP Royal Oak talk. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that towards the end of the year. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into mailbag. So, um, at timepiece tango on Instagram says you have to talk about <laughs> the cheap looking indices on the Rado Captain Cook. Hmm. And just for me personally, um, just one man's opinion. To me, they they visually remind me of a Seamaster Professional or a Planet Ocean. You know, so, some of the newer models of those. 
yeah. from Omega, from the, from the, just li- from a literal design standpoint, like the angle and the shapes of them. Yeah. You know, I, I, ha- I had a bit of a, yeah, yeah. And, and I had a bit of a conversation to kind of clarify and obviously they, they're not framed. They're not applied indices. They're not framed, you know, with like a stainless steel sort of outer, you know, bezel or anything like that. And yeah, and I think Rado have just done a really good job of keeping true for lack of a better phrase to what the to what the archive was when this watch first released if you go look at a 1962 rotto captain cook it doesn't really look different at all from the ones that they give us today the dimensions obviously have changed and the materials over time have improved and gotten better the movements and all this kind of stuff right but from a visual standpoint they're identical so yes i agree with you timepiece tango that it does look a little bit cheap but some of the conversation we're going to have today is about the fact that Rado purposely keep their design the way that it is, and they do it for a long time. So we'll get into that, but that's just my thought on it. What uh, what about you, David? Yeah, I mean, I can definitely see it. I know we I brought up earlier that you know these these watches kind of stand on their own, don't look very similar. But I feel like there are a couple watch brands that are around the same price. Oris would be one. They look similar to some of the Oris divers. Um, and I'm, but I mean, I don't think Oris looks all that cheap. I mean, I could definitely see they're, they're a little bit, I guess you could say fatter. Um, I don't know how the loom works. That's going to be the biggest thing. It's hard for me to tell cheapness or just, you know, quality, even going the opposite direction. How nice is it through a picture without seeing it on somebody's wrist and seeing how the loom actually shows because again like we said with your prx it, it looks great everything mm-hmm. looks great on it but when you when you actually see it in action that loom is very underwhelming half the time only a couple of the looms yeah. are working and the couple aren't and you know so um i could see where you maybe it's not your style but honestly that's with rado and a lot of this same thing with oris the oris rado those guys kind of stay in the same <clears throat> stratosphere to me you know they're around the same price point and i could see where you're either going to love them or you're going to hate them and uh, I could see that definitely with the way that these indices look on Rado as well. You made an excellent point about the PRX loom um, because the PRX indices, they look nicer than the Rado Captain Cut. And I know we're talking about just this, you know, sports watch compared to a diver and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. But to just say from a visual standpoint, if I had to like assess the, you know, on a one to five scale the quality or the costliness of those two sets of indices obviously i would say that the tso prx in that case has the more refined set of indices but to david's point the loom sucks and i hated that about my gentleman and i hate that about the prx and to be quite honest with you it's the one and only thing that sucks about that prx it's got the exhibition case back the bracelet feels way better than the gentleman the clasp is plenty fine the dial really actually captivating all this stuff yeah. is is good and it's like unexpected from Tiso, but then that loom lets you down. Whereas the Captain Cook, from the pictures I've seen at least, the loom looks good. But I think to I think to timepieces point there, the fact that they're just sort of painted on to the dial, mm-hmm. like there's there's no separation between the dial and the indice. I you think love is seeing the separation. Complaint. You like that dimension. Yeah. That that to anybody with anything yes. gives you more high quality. I don't care if you're looking at a business card. You know, if you can feel the separation of wording on a business card, you think, oh, this is high yep. quality. And the same thing with that. And yeah. um, but you know, but, I understand that. And you know, maybe you would think for that price point, you might get something a little bit better. But I feel like for the price point, you're getting better things when it comes to material and graininess of just the material of the watch and the strap. And yeah. that's where they're cutting their corner. Where every yeah. every watch company in this in this price point is going to cut a corner somewhere. So are you going to cut it at the indice? Or are you going to cut it on the bracelet? Or where are you going to cut it at? Because there's a few reasons, especially having a big name like this, that you're going to stay at this price point. And That's so a great point. You can't have yeah. a perfect watch at, you know, two thousand dollars. Maybe grand, a lot or, of people yeah. think you could, and <laughs> but I mean, you know, if we're being realistic, you normally can. Yeah. You've got some options out there. I mean, yeah, like you said, every price point is going to have one or two watches, one or two models from one brand, maybe that stick out above the rest. Like, oh, they yeah. do all those things great, and yeah, in this case, I think yeah, you're m- m- maybe sacrificing some of the refinement for um, some of the ingenuity when it comes to material. So yeah, great point. Mm-hmm. All right, well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and jump into history. 
So Rado started out as Schlepp Co. actually and was founded in Linnau, Switzerland by brothers Fritz, Ernest, and Werner in 1917. Founded in their family home with humble beginnings, the watch brand quickly rose to international prominence by the end of World War II. It was actually synonymous with Swiss quality that we all know today. Around 1953, the company began selling watches using the name Rado, although it had actually been registered as early as 1928. The name meant Will in Esperanto, and the name Rado was actually only used in international markets beginning in South America and Asia before reaching Switzerland in 1963. And this is kind of why we hinted earlier about why I think it's more popular over there. It's been being sold under that name for much longer than it ever did in the U.S. And so that's why I think it's still kind of like Grand Seiko is making its name in the market. Yeah. Rado was initially known for the waterproof automatic models. The Golden Horse name appeared in 1957 with the water-resistant Green Horse brand added the following year. These both featured seahorses on the back, two for a bayonet case back, and three for a screw-down back. Yeah, and I think they still use that today because if you Mm -hmm. flip a Captain Cook over on the back, you'll see some seahorses. Oh, yeah. And in 1962, Rado released the first scratch-proof watch, known as the Diastar. This used ultra-resistant hard metals with a modern take on steel sports watches to that era. To do this, they used an entirely new material for watchmaking, tungsten carbide. Tungsten is a very, very heavy metal, and something that Rado prides itself on, of course, is their use of vast materials. And so, Mm -hmm. to me, this is really as on-brand as it comes. As a result, the Diastar launched Rado into a realm of prominence that they had not yet found. And this is why I think understanding the history of these brands is so important. Rado broke the norm of gold dress watches and steel sports watches to make their own very unique style with materials that nobody else had ever used. And I think we should thank them for that. Who knows how many flagship designs came afterward as a result of that norm being broken, right? Because you Mm -hmm. just have to remember at that time, steel sports watches gold dress watches the diver had just come out a few years before that and so they, it was it was a very copycat world back then and not just not a lot of ingenuity yeah uh, in the same year 1962 the captain cook diver appeared during what was like i just said becoming the the dive watch heyday a very yeah. simple if not boring design by 1960 standards the watch wasn't the most popular on the market remember the big name divers like the rolex a mariner had just released a few years prior to the captain cook But eventually, Rado kept the collection full-time, and it remains nearly unaltered from its original design language in today's offerings. Visually, we're still offered the same exact design all these years later, just like the Diastar. So to go back to that mailbag question, I definitely agree with you. And yeah, I think that that is potentially something that Rado are priding themselves on, is keeping that originality. Yeah, it's kind of funny how, you know, back then it was nothing super special but uh, today is one of their most popular watches yep <laughs> that yep. you know they're at least known for whether that's a good thing or not they're known for their captain cook mm-hmm. or it could honestly to me it could just be the name captain cook <laughs> that's a, that's a kind of out there name you know for uh watch standards having yeah. a two name after a character that's right. interesting so that might be part of the reason why it's so well known but in the 1970s rado took to the square watch world and created the elegance and the glissade which at the time was groundbreaking in technological design with slope sidings edge to edge crisp sapphire crystals and because of that these models were actually very popular and some of their most popular watches still today and so they still this is kind of what they're known for as well yeah, by the 1980s, Rado had built a reputation as the master of materials, especially with the arrival of the Anatom in 18, I'm sorry, in 1983. This watch was said to mold itself to the wrist for optimal comfort, and the success was instantaneous. To celebrate this, Rado had Andy Warhol create a one by one meter painting for them, which would turn out to be one of the last works that he created. Yeah, kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and in 1986, Rado came out with the Integral, which was created with their material more commonly used for the ultra high speed aircraft. So, this is kind of when they really take that leap and bounds for their high tech masters of material that they're still calling for today. Um, this paved the way for the iconic Rado Ceramica, possibly the first watch in the world with a bracelet, crown, and case made entirely of high tech material. Also in 1986 was a landmark year for another reason with Rado. 
Uh, and that year, Rado joined the SMH, which later renamed to the Swatch Group in 1998. But this was helping them their brand fuel its next phase of innovation and driven by even more pioneering materials. In 2002, the Swiss factory unveiled the Rado V10K, made of high-tech diamond with a strength of 10,000 Vickers. It entered the Guinness Book of World Records for the world's hardest watch at the time. And still might actually be today. I, I haven't heard of it's anything crazy. breaking that. But uh, <laughs> another landmark in Swiss engineering was achieved with the Ultra Slim uh, ceramic masterpiece, the True Thin Line. So just they, they have a lot of true different watches you'll see on their website when you look them up. The True mm-hmm. Thin Line, the True Square. I think there's even the True Round. They have a bunch yep, of True, true Round. Yep. I almost picked a True Round. Almost. Yeah. That's their that's their stick i guess you could say Mm -hmm. (laughs) measuring at just 4.9 millimeters the injected high-tech ceramic monoblock case gave the true thin line its extreme lightness and minimalist lines this technique enabled another wave of design breakthroughs notably the rado hyperchrome yep and they still offer well they still this wasn't that long ago but yeah today there are captain cooks offered in rado hyperchrome mm-hmm. and in 2011 to wrap up here the physicists and engineers in Langnau unveiled ceramos which is a high-tech material originally introduced in 1993 for the rado Sintra, offering the sheen of metal and the hardness of high-tech ceramic rado ceramics set the stage for collaborations with a long list of design superstars and of course these ceramics like many of their collections are still a firm staple within the brand today and yeah, I've got to agree with that. The the offering the sheen of metal and the hardness of high-tech ceramic. Mm-hmm. Uh, because if you've ever looked at a Rado, they don't look like stainless steel because they're not. It's crazy. It's, yeah, they're they're, all the bracelets look like liquid to me. I, there's no yeah. other way that I can explain that. And if you've seen one, maybe you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you don't. But when they I have, look at it, it looks like liquid. It looks like it's wet. They have like, a, and I'm, I'm about to talk about this in my first watch. So we can go ahead and transition over there. But they have a just a different, shine to them glow to them it's just different like you said it's not like your normal um you know stainless steel Mm -mm. submariner bracelet it's it's different so the first watch we want to talk about is the true square open heart and so this is a watch that i it really reinvigorated, like I was saying, my love for Rado. I've always known of them. I'd see them in, like I said, Jared's and different, you know, ADs randomly around. And but they were kind of, you know, like Oris. There, there were some cool things, but nothing that really just fired me up until I went down here and saw this True Square Open Heart. This watch is awesome. All right, it's a square watch, as you can see. We'll post it all over our social media. It'll be posted stories. This will be, you guys will be able to see it for voting reasons. But mm-hmm. this watch is, it's, it's just something, nothing I've seen before. It's light, but it's not titanium light. And most people, as you know, I don't really love titanium. It's almost too light, but it's light enough where it's not, you think and it's this big bulky thing when you just see a picture of it, but it's really not. It wears fantastic on your wrist. You can look up all different types of reviews. I've probably watched 10 reviews this week. Not one of them has said a bad thing about the way it wears. I think they hit it perfectly. It's technically a 38 millimeter, but it wears more like a 40. So, but, and I think if you would have had a 40 or a 41, it would have worn almost too big. It wouldn't have been able to be dressed up. It just would have been this bulky, you know, not saying Richard yeah. Mill, but you know how the Richard Mills are just bulky things that they're just huge. They're a yeah. different style. This goes with a lot of different people's styles. I've seen pictures and videos of people wearing it with suits. I mean, it, it's just, it's crazy how this watch wears. Um, originally released in 2021 um, with a case material, like I said, their own high tech material that they don't even, I think they say a bunch of numbers behind it. And I won't try to remember it off the top of my head, but it is 38 millimeters. And it comes with their own in-house caliber R734 movement, fully automatic with three hertz frequency and 80 hours of power reserve. So very good quality when it comes to the power reserve here. Again, a lot of watches at this price point and with this intricate, you know, skeleton dial look, they're going to, you're not going to have the time of the power reserve that you would on a normal, just everyday watch so i think it's very impressive that they put out 80 hours here so it's a polished plasma high-tech ceramic case and crown exude and it exudes a sleek contemporary allure like i was saying it's just 
<laughs> I don't even know how to, it, it comes in black and it comes in charcoal gray. The black has a gilted gold intricacies on the dial. The charcoal gray comes with this blue that honestly pops. And I'm torn looking back at pictures of this watch. I'm torn on which one I really like more. Cause I started out really liking the charcoal gray when I was there. And then later it went back and started loving the black. And now I'm back to the charcoal gray. I don't know which one I like. It's, it's one of those watches that's great. Every time you see it, you, you honestly would love to have both cause you could wear them two completely different times. I love the blue, man. It gives it, <clears throat> it gives it a nice pop. Yeah. Cause like I said, that, that ceramic, that, let me see, that is ceramic on the bracelet, right? Because mm-hmm. I know the Captain Cook is the Captain Cook is ceramic bracelet too. Yeah, and there um, and that that I think is why it's lighter than a normal stainless steel, but it's not too light like a titanium. Yeah. That ceramic is like a perfect happy so, happy medium. So that's what I was going to ask you. So is it light? As, and, yes, and I and I think you're going to say no to this. But is it light like titanium, or is it just light compared to maybe what you is light compared when to you stainless? Saw? And okay, yeah, I so, think so. It is lighter than a stainless watch, but it's not as light as titanium. It's somewhere in the middle. Yeah, somewhere in okay. the middle. And and I think again, like you were just saying there, I think it really throws you off when you first put it on because you're expecting something heavier. I mean, okay. you're thinking a big thick watch like a. Like when we're putting on the uh, Black Bay chronographs from Tudor and they're freaking heavy and they weigh mm-hmm. down your, you're expecting something like that. But with the ceramic, it's just light. Maybe it probably maybe even lighter than my sub, if not right there around it. So uh, you're, you're, it's, it's a great look. It's a great feel. Um, another really cool feature of this is if you blow it up um, here, Brett, we have it blown up right here. If you look at the Rado that's at the three o'clock window, right mm-hmm. above it is a anchor and that anchor is actually free moving. And so uh, okay. as you, as you, uh, cool. move around, it just moves with it. I believe yeah. even some of the captain the, cooks do that as well. Yeah. All the captain cooks have that too. Yeah. yeah. Like the little floating icon. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, uh, that's definitely a hallmark of Rado too. I think. Yeah. I didn't know that it was on the other ones because yeah, it's not nearly as pronounced on the true uh, yeah. on the true square. You really got to look at it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's hidden in there. I mean, it's just a beautiful, intricate. You see the pearls of the movement. This is one mm-hmm. of those watches again. How most skeletons are, but it's not overwhelmingly skeleton dialed. Where it's like you don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah. They have a good what I like to call a spider web. Uh, dial where you know has legs that kick out so you can still kind of see the hours you can read it without sitting there for five minutes trying to figure out what time it is you can read the watch and but it's still just as beautiful and intricate where it's how a case back would normally be most people want to look at the case back to see the intricacies of a movement but now you don't have to and uh, i think it has that happy medium has diamonds for the uh the hour markers around it it's it's a very well-made watch that really took me off guard and something different that Rado really hit out of the park, I believe. Yeah, I was gonna comment on the on the the hour markers and those indices. Yeah, that's that's what I think. Like from a visual standpoint, because like you said, the skeleton dial, um, those can be hard to read. But I think the minute track is executed pretty well, and I think it's mm-hmm. done better on the on the black than it is on the charcoal. The charcoal having the blue yeah. dial, um, because the black, yeah, it has those diamonds against that sort of dark sort of like wood grain color almost so there's a little bit more contrast so if it's like a legibility thing and the least... guilt yeah and the guilt mm-hmm. of the at men in our hands yeah. on the black shows up much more than on the blue it's silver yeah you know. that silver so blends in blends with all the more. bridges and all the all the movement components for sure yeah, yeah. so yeah. they they did a good job there because that's you know that's always a big gripe of mine when it comes to skeleton dials is that the legibility is a lot of the time just not there. So that's yeah. a good, that's a good execution of it for sure. And so if you want one of these, like the blue where it doesn't have the diamonds in it, you're going to be around 26 to 28. And if you want one with the diamond uh, indices and everything with the gilted, you're going to be right at 3,100. And uh, again, kind of a cool thing, which makes me really wish I, I got it down there was it's a lot cheaper in the Bahamas. You're mm-hmm. not paying the taxes and all. And, uh, so I, you know, if I was to buy one of these, I'd be going back down there. I think, I mean, if you're going to buy any watch, you might as well just 
do it know? down there. Same yeah, thing with JLC. I mean, they had everything down there. It was just a watchman's mm-hmm. dream being down there every night after dinner. I just walk over back through the JLC and the Omega and the Breitling store. I wouldn't even yeah. go to the Rolex because I mean, shoot, you see that all the time. There's always Rolexes around because they don't sell them. But you know, going to all these JLCs and Rados and Oris and Breitling, Omega, even some tags, you know, you don't get that. Normally you have to go to multiple different ADs to get mm-hmm. all of that in one place. So it's nice to have it all in one house. That is very nice. Yeah. Cause there's nothing worse than going into a, um, into an AD and there's, you know, maybe only brands you've seen before. It's nice when there's, when there's some extras, some extras yeah. in there. And just so people do know, they, they do have a, the true square, just original. Those come in quartz, um, doesn't have the skeleton dial much more tuned, tuned back. Probably doesn't really look as nice either. In my yeah. opinion, those are in the low two thousands, but if you did want something like that, if skeleton wasn't your style, those are around twenty two, twenty four hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. It's a cool watch, man. It's uh yeah, it's, it's a, you know, Cartier Santos with materials and and flair like all over it i mean Mm -hmm. that's you know it i'm not saying it looks like a ripoff nothing like that i'm just saying a square watch that is executed with that's where the similarities in yeah 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 i mean it just is executed um with such i don't know it's all of rado is like space age stuff to me we'll talk about that as we go on um Anything else you got on the, no, on the true square? That's it. Yep. All right, cool. Let's move on to the second watch here in our sort of personal uh, watch collection category here. So my first watch today, you know, no should come as no surprise, no big shock to anybody, but my money's on the line. I'm buying a Rado. I'm definitely going with a Captain Cook. And in particular, I'm going with a Captain Cook high-tech ceramic diver. So originally released in 1962, uh, with a case diameter of 43 millimeter stainless steel, titanium, and ceramic is going to be material throughout, right? So you've got stainless steel on the bezel, you've got titanium, uh, titanium, I believe, on some parts of the bezel, maybe some parts of the dial. Ceramic is going to be the bracelet. That's going to be the the bulk of the material will be that ceramic. And that's why earlier I was asking you what material that was because they use so many in their watches. They don't just have a ceramic. They don't just have a stainless steel. So yeah, interesting. Stainless, titanium, and ceramic all in this one. Case thickness, 14.6. So it's getting up there on the chunkier side. But with that, you get 300 meters of water resistance. So yes, this is um, an ISO 6425 certified dive watch. Um, movement in this Captain Cook is going to be uh, a base at a 2824. Um, you know, mainly used by Rado, Mido, and Certina. So some good brands there for sure. Yeah. Um, three hertz again, like the True Square that David talked about earlier. Lowering that beat frequency down to three hertz does get you that additional power reserve. We talk about that a lot, right? So, of course, we all want a spring drive with 80 hours of power reserve, but that's incredibly difficult to do. So <laughs> dropping down to three hertz, I very much would expect 80 hours of power reserve. So glad that yeah. we see that. And for this particular one that I'm talking about, the high tech ceramic diver, this one uh, is going to come in at 3,700 USD. The price range from the Captain Cook collection in general, though, is going to be starting at 2,100 US, all the way up to 4,800. And a couple of interesting things about this watch before we kind of discuss it and get your thoughts on it. Um, I've never seen this before. Any watch brand or site that we've been to, they list out the weight of most of, if not all of their watches in grams. So um, the Captain Cook here, the ceramic model or ceramic titanium stainless steel model, 159 gram weight. Uh, For reference, the Black Bay 58 is 145 grams and the newer model ceramic subs from what I gathered, 156 grams. So a little bit of a tricky and kind of odd thing to to figure out the weight of some of these others, but yeah it is and that's why i was asking you earlier about the true square that's why i asked about the weight of it because i was curious to know like does it just look like it's going to be heavy and it surprises you or do you pick it up and you're like oh that feels like a grand seiko snowflake it feels weightless almost and i yeah, don't and it feels it's, cheap it's not but, that. i would i would yeah. equ- i would equate it to yeah somewhere between a black bay 58 and a sub yeah I, I think i think it's like you said it's a little bit of both it's you're expecting it to be heavier but it is definitely way lighter than you would think it should be yeah, we know. And so that's so interesting because when I, I mean, I've, you know, I've handled and I've worn some Captain Cooks and I don't, I mean, I never felt like I picked one up and I was really surprised one way or the other that it was too heavy or, or too light. It didn't, 
it I, wasn't I think, anything that stuck out like that to me. And so well, I mean, looking at the weight, uh, that's uh, that's what I would think it would be. It would be somewhere between a Black Bay 58 and r- around a Submariner. I mean, it's a diver yeah. that's, you know, solid through and through. And, you know, you it doesn't it's not titanium, so you're expecting it to be a little bit heavier. I, yeah. I, I just think it's a beefier watch. I mean, yeah. it's thicker than it, and that's, you know. I think I for know, think some reason fine. in my head, I think I've just told myself that ceramic is – akin to titanium when it comes to weight and Mm. not really the case but i think maybe it's just like a lie or like a myth that i've convinced myself of so whenever i see these you know high tech and it's it's a fully ceramic case and a fully ceramic um you know bracelet i just i think my mind just goes to okay that's going to be really really light and then you're like "Eh, no it's the same as you know most die watches which is fine Mm -hmm. But um, nonetheless, like I said, interesting to see that they do list out the weight there. Um, like I said earlier, ISO 6425 certified diver. Um, and also, I believe I mentioned the case and the bracelet, both made of the matte plasma high tech ceramic, while the rotating bezel is made of polished stainless steel. So, um, yeah, it's it's very interesting. And like I said earlier, hands down, this would be my go to. So if I'm buying a Rado, if and when I buy a Rado, this would be the particular model too. And I highlighted one of these blue dials because I think that it's it plays really nicely off of that material. The background. And we talk That's about yeah. <laughs> well, yes, and and the background of the picture looks awesome. But you know, we talk about like um the look of these different materials. Stainless steel has a very um, you know, it's got a very familiar look to it right it's Mm -hmm. like the it's the color of it and then titanium is a little bit different right it's a little bit darker yeah and then this you know so this being ceramic it it actually looks even darker than that so it looks almost like stainless steel that's been sort of like colored to be this sort of heather gray so it's it it doesn't look like most watches It, it is a little unique from just a visual standpoint when it's got all this material around it yeah, I mean it's a yeah. very good watch. Um, it looks cool. It looks safe. You know, safe pick, if you're asking me. But uh, <laughs> it's funny how me and you kind of switched right here. Normally, I'm the boring guy that likes just a, the boring <laughs> diver, and and you're the one that likes some crazier shit. And now yeah. I'm I'm picking the crazy watch, and you're <laughs> putting me to sleep over here. I mean, what? <laughs> well, I mean, look, 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 look. It, it it does look good though. Weird. I like it. I like this watch a lot. It's it's pretty, but. But, uh, and like you said, I like the, the darker tone of it. It looks like a stainless steel watch that's been in a smoke house, <laughs> you know, getting smoky it, to it. It's smoky it does, look. man. Yeah. yeah. It's, I don't know. The sunburst I mean, dial of the blue is very nice. And I mean, yeah. Captain Cook, I mean, that's just a cool name. I don't it know. Is it is a cool it name. It just gets me. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I mean, you're talking about like, oh, you know, it's boring and, you know, I, I think it's boring and it's also unique and that's weird. Right. But it is, it's, it's cl- the styling of this watch is so clean and simple. And and remember, it's not different than when they made it in 1962. Like you don't yeah. believe me, go type in 1962, Captain Cook, go look at like an original and then look at a new one. They didn't change anything about it. Again, maybe some of the dimensions, but not very much. And all the design, I mean, the minute track, the indices, the handset, the, the second hand, the bezel, the, 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 the links, the three link bracelet, it all looks nearly think, identical so I it's think not just i think just dive watches in general are pretty boring when it comes to like if you're trying yeah. to find something out there you're never looking at the dive watches dive watches are on the same track and yeah they always have been but but you were saying this would this one put you to sleep and and i think even though it's clean and it's simple and it is a boring design it also doesn't look like any other dive watch that we've ever yeah. talked about. You know and, that, and that's what I was about to say. I was like, in yeah. the in the market of just dive watches, it's definitely different. Yeah. But if you're just comparing it to everything, then yeah, it's more similar. And you can say, yeah, it's boring, whatever. But no, if you're just comparing it to other dive watches, I mean, sunburst dial, a very different bracelet. Yeah. It has the the shine, the glossy uh, center links in it. I mean, it, it does look very yeah. good. It's a, I mean, it's a good looking watch. I, I don't dislike the watch. I would I would also take one of those, but. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take it before I take mine when it comes to voting. All right, all right. Look, look. You're trying to. <laughs> I'm you're trying, trying to sway I'm, some look, votes. I'm trying to I'm, sway some votes over here. Is all I'm trying to do. Sway some votes. Get some. Get the first dub. You know. Well, look. If we're politicking out there, okay. <laughs> everyone listening. What are you going to wear every single day? Are you going to pick up a blue faced diver, or are you going to pick up a skeleton dial? Square oh watch. Gosh. But if we're doing this where you're getting to pick every, you're getting a new watch every episode, I mean, you want something that stands out. You do. You do. You do. 
All right. And is that a good segue into I the next sort of section of our collections, which are just, I think we're, we're looking at this like watches that we need to tell you about. Yeah. Watches that you should know about that are on this, the market that exist in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And to me, I mean, this watch, the reason I picked this one is I see this watch a lot of places. And, you know, I think once you learn and see this watch out there, you'll be able to recognize it. And that's what happened with me in the integral. You know, I watching, you know, the fiasco that was Deion Sanders in Colorado at Wait, the beginning of the year. For, for everyone that doesn't know who this is, give, give, a, give a quick rundown for people that are either not in America or not college football fans. Give oh, yeah. a quick run because... I yeah. think this is going to be fun. So the University of Colorado, big name coach that just got hired on um, <laughs> this he, year. He's a former NFL superstar. Yeah. And primetime Dion. If you don't know who Dion Sanders is, just Google primetime Dion you should know, draft. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that picture. Very from the draft swag. Is so got the swag. Got the chains. Very cool. He has the style to outbeat every other coach's style. Oh, yeah. So uh, naturally – when he's in games and you keep seeing him, you know, hugging his son or whoever, hugging some players in the game, you're like, man, what's that man's watch sheet it was? And I, the only reason I recognized it was because, again, the trip to Rado's AD, seeing this okay. watch, this was another watch I got to recognize. It's, I'm, I'm going to end up being just Rado's versions of Cartier type watches. This is the rectangle watch. Okay. You know, I, I did the square and now this is the rectangle. Um, it was originally released in 1986, but redesigned over the last couple of years. So at the men's and women's watches, their men's uh, thickness, or I'm sorry, case material is ceramic or stainless steel. Actually, they will let you, I believe, have both or combined. The materials are so hard with Rado because yeah. like, for, even for example, the Captain Cook, I said it's stainless, titanium and ceramic. And then on the website, it doesn't say what's actually made of titanium. But yeah. it tells you that it's those three there. So, yeah, we're not like unsure, but we're also <laughs> just kind of unsure. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> so the men's against 31 millimeters, women's 27 or 22.7 millimeters um, long, I guess you would say. And then the case thickness for men's against seven and a half, why women's are six and a half. So you can pick actually your bracelet size, which is kind of interesting on this watch as well. On their website, you can pick your wrist size and pick how long you want your bracelet because it is kind of interleaked, interlocking bracelets. Again, your water resistance is going to be five bar. The only thing about this watch, it is quartz. So if you hate mm. quartz, it is quartz. But again, I think no. once you once you recognize this watch and once we post it, you'll start seeing it on online different places and your cost variation this watch is actually very uh affordable for what they are you're going to be around 2100 up to i think the most expensive i found was 2400 so again this was something that is sleek very rado-esque i guess you could say stands kind of apart um like you Definitely said they're does. very spaceshipy this watch like we said in the history is known for their high quality high tech materials you know materials that used they used to use on aircrafts and stuff this is the watch that uh they became of that and it still to this day kept the sleek you know almost spaceshipy it i don't want to say this in a derogatory way but it reminds me a lot of mavados you know, mm. you see Mavados, they're, they're black, they're very sleek, minimalistic, very you modern just looking. Like the dial yeah. design? Yeah, or? the look, okay. the dial design, the look of them. They're always sleek, interlocking, you know, bracelets. It looks like a Mavado, but a much more high quality, uh, even though okay. it is still coarse, though, as well. Okay. But the material and the case material is much more high quality. Yeah, this one, just like the next watch we're going to talk about, this is where Rado is like, we're from a different planet. Like, they're, I mean, and to sort of tie it in with the Captain Cook, it's like they don't they don't try to do what the rest of the market is doing. They don't like it really feels like Rado don't give a shit what the market is telling people. You know, maybe if they yeah. were, they would maybe change some things about the Captain Cook, like the indices, maybe, you know, but it seems like they really don't care. And they make these crazy watches. It's like they really do beat to the tune of their own drum. Um and yeah, I mean, hopefully we'll get some pictures of these like on, you know, some on, on wrists, right. And share those out because they just don't look like anything else on the market today. And it's yeah. crazy that they're being offered in like in the year 2023, it looks like a watch from the seventies. Um, so there's some cool stuff about that to me. It, it's, 
I don't know. It, it speaks a lot to the brand and like there and to the Rado's ethos, like the people running Rado and the people that are in charge of looking back into their archives and deciding like which design do we want to pull forward and, and offer the public today um, have got some chops on them because yeah, it's, it's, it's unique and it's out there. Yeah. I mean, there's a video, there's a video out on uh, YouTube with Teddy Baldazar and the CEO of Rado. And he talks yeah. about it. He's like, man, you know, we, we, we're our own design, we're our own brand and we're going to keep doing our own thing. Yep. That's in-house and our in-house designers want to do, we're sticking with it. So, you know, they have no apologies for that. Yep. I love it, man. I love it. In a in a world where, you know, you're, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't, you are copying Rolex or it doesn't look enough like, like the watch that I like. It's like, <laughs> yeah. you know, a, a lot of brands, I feel like they sort of suffer from that. So it, it's, it's, if nothing else, it's refreshing to see a brand that's just like, you know what, we're doing the same stuff we've been doing. Yeah. We love it. Our, our fans love it. So yeah, I love it. Um, anything else on our third watch here on, that one. on yeah. the integral Let's head into their other uh Let's, crazy material watch yes i i'm more excited to talk about this than i am the captain cook a lot of people know about the captain cook so my last watch our final watch here on the watches that we want you to know about is gonna be the dia star and if you're like really really a hardcore watch person if you're a really hardcore rado fan of course you're gonna know what the dia star is but if you're not the dia star was released the same year that the captain cook was in 1962 um, this is the one that they correct that they had the hardest watch. No, or am I making that up? No, no, okay. that's a different one. No, the, I'm that's sorry. This is their first scratch. This is the scratch watch that yes. they came out with. Yep, that's right. Scratch proof. So 35 millimeter uh, case diameter, uh, or yeah, it's hard, right? This is um, <laughs> actually. Let me just run through the specs and then I'll and then I'll talk about this. So 35 millimeter case diameter, 11.9 millimeter on the case thickness. Water resistance only going to be 30 meters, but if and when you lay eyes on this watch, you'll be like, oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah. Um, caliber movement inside this one from Rado, they list out the movement as the 03.764.852. I couldn't really find much else about that, so um, I'll leave that up to the internet sleuths. <laughs> um, power reserve on that watch, or on that movement rather, is going to be 80 hours again, so hurrah for that. And the cost variation um, on this watch is going to be 700 USD to, uh, up to 2400 depending on whether you're going for a quartz and automatic. There's also some skeleton dial variations here. And the reason that I kind of stuttered a little bit on the case diameter is because this has a very similar turtle case shape, like a lot of, yeah. the, like a lot of the Seiko divers do from back in the yeah. 60s, right? So... It's going to wear, I have to imagine, a little bit differently than a 35. If it's a 35 millimeter on the dial, it's probably going to wear maybe closer to like a 39, 38, potentially a 40, uh, depending on the particular model and the wear. But this is, yes, the first watch to ever use the scratch proof material of tungsten carbide, which we talked about earlier, right? Um, tungsten being a very, very heavy metal and one that is incredibly resistant. So it is hard when those two when those materials are combined carbon and tungsten, they make this tungsten carbide. It is yes, a very hard, a very heavy metal. And it's also a cool watch to me because this goes again to speak to a lot of what Rado's ethos is and how they sort of view themselves in the market. This watch has been continuously offered for more than half a century, right? 62 it released. It's still on the market, just like the captain cook is. And it's virtually unchanged, just like the captain cook is. Yeah. People are still buying this watch. And there's still an appreciation for it. My, you know, my thoughts on it, right? It's such a funky space age looking watch that I'm sure most of us would hardly ever purchase. But if I wore this in a room with any watch person, I don't care if they're wearing a Tissot, a Rolex, or a 5711, I guarantee you that they would notice this and be like, what the hell is that? Yeah. Um, and I, I really think that it's cool. Like the gold one, I don't care how cheesy it is, the PVD coated, you know, fake gold stainless steel i think it's a cool looking piece of almost like 70s era nostalgia and what i was going to say about the scratch proof thing i keep kind of saying that in quotes and i and i have it written down here for us in quotes but something i read interestingly enough is that it's it's pretty true and you can find you know some some collectors but also you know potentially you'll find some for sale from the 60s you know, even early and mid 60s, a few years after these things released, 
and they still look effectively brand new because it legit is scratch proof. So yeah. that to me is really cool too, that you can find, you know, a 40, a 50, a 60 year old watch that's never been polished and probably potentially never will have to be polished. Yeah. So it's, it's crazy. The look of these, I love the look. It reminds me of something that, you know, somebody on an old, uh, Apollo 11 movie yeah. or something would be wearing, you know, when the scientists would be wearing or the mine hunter guys would yeah. be wearing, you know, it, it reminds you of an old s- s- movie set in the 60s, 70s, somewhere in there. It d- and, Yeah, uh, it does. Very cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, 70s for sure, but I mean, it's just late it's, 60s. Yeah, it <laughs> screams 60s and 70s, man. I think yep. it's cool as hell. You know, me getting that TSO PRX, that's a that's also sort of a direct pull from the from the TSO archives. Yeah, you know, we talked a little bit about it. The the Tiso C Star from 1967, I believe. That's that sort of direct lineage to the current day PRX, and that too, man. It's a it's an it's a it's a vintage you know look and feel watch, and yeah. um you know and like same thing with with this one, right? I mean, on the Tiso, of course, the integrated bracelet is very unique, and that particular style that they do, I think, is more vintage than let's say uh you know a Nautilus or a, a Royal Oak those being yeah. the two sort of prime integrated bracelet examples. But this one, the Rado Diastar bracelet, it definitely reminds me of a, um, of a Rolex day date of a president bracelet. So yeah. I think that's cool because I know that bracelets with those sort of smaller links are definitely more comfortable. It looks yeah. like a comfy watch. And I mean, definitely does. And I, and I love, it's just the, the turtle shell shell, mm-hmm. like you said, it's, it's definitely, Different. Oh, you found one of the yeah, and you yeah, found man. one of like the OG ones. Yeah, and I was looking yeah. at the OG. I mean that that has the metal bracelet, like the Breitling, uh, you know the like Breitling the mesh. Super Ocean, yeah, metal mm-hmm. mesh bracelet, and then it has the the vaulted dial. It's yeah. I mean it's just nineteen seventies. I mean this is that one is yeah. yeah that one right there that that original and I be- is that the sixtieth anniversary? That's the one that's yes. called the original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on the Rado website. And I know, you know, David and I are sort of looking at it. Obviously, you guys are on a podcast, but <laughs> um, th- yeah, so they do still make and produce and sell the the original design. And that's what it's called, the Di- the Rado Diastar Original. Yeah. Um, and so that one is the one that looks like Captain Kirk. You know, it looks <laughs> like. I mean, it's just, know. yeah, it's something that, you know, um, uh, it's something that a scientist in 1972 should be wearing. <laughs> yes. Yes. Put it that way. I, and then die a star, like the the yep. outer space. <laughs> I love that you say a scientist from 1970s because that was going to be something I wrapped up the episode with is just that Rado is is a funky little brand when it comes to design. And yeah. if I had to pinpoint like someone that, that wears this is someone that's like a numbers guy, like a yeah. like a really smart scientist, math major computer well, and that's, programmer that's, that's the person that i think rado appeal to is like someone that actually gives a shit and understands the coolness and the uniqueness of merging carbon and tungsten to make a scratch proof watch and then it still looks like one from the 70s like in my dumb little brain that's like that's who i think that rado would appeal to i think you know? they're very i agree with that and but i also think they're very two-pronged in that approach where yes they're die star they're captain cook they're they either you're either that exactly or you're some young kid that's buying an open heart true square you know there's yeah. no in between <laughs> they're yeah. they have two different they're they're the two-headed monster you're either you know that you have that vintage old 1970s space look or you have yep the very modern skeleton look watch and there's there's no centerpiece yeah i agree wholeheartedly the between the integral and the diastar yeah that's your i think we hit it pretty good with the modern takes the true square the new diver modern looking diver and then the old the old takes with the integral and the uh the diastar those are and like i said keep an eye out you'll you'll see it on Deion sanders if you watch american football you'll Mm -hmm. you'll uh it's uh it's very cool different i don't think you'll see the die star many places but if you ever do you better try it on <laughs> yeah i mean honestly I, i've never seen one out in the metal but um you know I, I know we say it every episode once we research it and dig into it and you find out like why are these watches even made because at first glance you're like i would never wear that and then you find out yeah. you know the history behind it and the material and all that kind of stuff. And you're like, okay, cool. I, I can, <laughs> I think I can spare 700 bucks on, on something yeah, that's, that's something got that history. sort of history. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, yeah. cool, man. Well, 
Um, yeah, we're like right at one hour. Anything that you've got on any of the watches that we talked about? Anything you want to touch on? No, I think you hit the nail on the head talking about just what Rado is. I think this is, again, a company that you should be aware of um, for, you know, we have, I think, a vast majority of listeners that are either watch fanatics or guys that maybe just, you know, like it and kind of like watches, maybe listen to only a couple watch, you know, a couple of our podcasts a month or every couple yeah. months, you know, if they like the brand, they've heard the brand, they'll listen to it. But I think this is definitely a brand that you should be familiar with, especially if you're a younger guy. And uh, this is a brand with some great history and uh, something that you could really dive into and a watch you could wear and be proud of yeah for sure because i think it also to to just add another point another layer to that i think rado add on to the fact that they do play in the more attainable space i mean we're talking like eleven hundred dollars for an automatic dia star we're talking twenty two hundred for a captain cook diver so they play in this lower lower end sub luxury. five four or five k yeah 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 you're i don't think you're gonna get out anything more than 4500 maybe 5k tops and then and then also in addition to that you've got to our point earlier you've got the modern stuff even though the yeah. captain cook has not been updated it's it serves just perfectly fine as it a modern, modern dive watch yeah. and then the dive star and the integral are completely 70 space age so I think it's cool that, yeah, you've got some, you, you have all of that. You've got the affordability, you have the modern offerings, you have the classic archival staple pieces that are probably never going anywhere. So Rado do offer a lot of, a lot of angles that you're not going to find with hardly any other brand out there. And yeah. then of course, if you're a nerd and you want to nerd out on the materials, there's a a ton to run with there as well. So, yeah, definitely. Again, this is one of those watch brands too, that they'll be at ADs and, you know, ADs will start, you know, they'll have Rolex, they'll have Omega. Like I know Bromberg's in Birmingham, um, Alabama (laughs) in the U S not, not the Europe, (laughs) not the what England one. There you go. English. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, and, uh, but you know, they have, they have Rolex, um, Tudor, Breitling, and then they'll have maybe not Breitling, I'm sorry, Omega, and then they'll have Oris or Rado. So, mm-hmm. you know, they're on the lower scale. If you're like, hey, I'm in my early 20s, just out of college, I want a nice watch, I love watches, and I want to start making, you know, hey, I'm using this AD, I want to start making inroads. This would be a great starter watch to get. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with that too. And yeah, Oris is a good, Oris is a good comparable brand from a pricing perspective. Oris, but- yeah, yeah you know but but you know again it's just like rado offer f- just from the design aspect they offer so much uniqueness that none of these other people do so you know it's i mean it's it's definitely a cliche but i mean i'll just say it like it they are in a league of their own you know it's not that the price is too is super low so everyone can afford it it's not super high and it's very elitist it's just you know it's kind of in a little sweet spot and if, if you're yeah. a guy or gal that's willing and able to pay you know, 15, 2,500 bucks for a watch, you can get something that is as unique as you want it to be, or as, um, complimentary to a modern timepiece as it comes with the captain cook. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. Um, any other watch topics you want to, you want to get into or anything? Um, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, we don't have to, we don't have to, you know, Um, if you want to, if you want to get into, uh, you know, the debate that we were texting about and said, or do you want to save that for next episode? That might be a next episode. Um, Wait, which debate? Talk- I've already forgot. I just had a yeah. kid three days ago. I didn't even <laughs> yeah. know today was Wednesday. The watch collection, me. the watch collection debate of having a lot versus. You know. Oh yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I think I think pretty, let's, yeah. let's 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 tease that for next episode because Ooh, I think okay. when we're doing Grand Seiko, you know, that might be a shorter episode because we're just reviewing. So that'll be a good time okay. to really dig deep. So we're not pressed on time. So okay, tune in well, in two weeks. Yes, tune in in two weeks, and we'll get into that, which is in a nutshell. Is it better to have more watches with a few that you don't wear, or do you want to have a core two, three, or four watch collection that get equal wear? That's in a nutshell what we're talking about. So yeah. if you're like, ah, I kind of want to get this extra watch, or I don't know, is three too many? I don't know. If you're having any of those questions about your own uh, oh, financial yeah. problems with watch collecting <laughs> you know <laughs> tune and in this for is the all, next episode and yes yes and this is all if you can afford and not have to take out a second mortgage on your house yes. to get the 10 watches <laughs> was it all right, uh, y'all have the late great one. Marshawn Lynch said take care of your chickens yeah, yeah take care of your chickens before you buy that Rolex <laughs>
All right, everybody. Great episode, buddy. I had a lot of fun doing this one. Um, we'll catch up later. And for our listeners, uh, thanks again. We hope that everyone had a great Thanksgiving if you're here in the States. And if not, obviously, we've got Christmas coming up. So happy holidays to everybody, wherever you are in the world. Uh, be safe. Uh, be nice. Have a good holiday. Wear that watch. Tag us in your wristwatch picks. All that good stuff. And we'll catch up with you in two weeks. A bunch of juicy stuff. Peace. Oh, that was fun. Oh, gosh.